Okay, guys. <laughs> uh, just killing time while people filter in. Hey, uh, if, if uh, Wichita Falls Fish Keeper, that is a uh, 13th Floor Elevators 1966 album a band from Austin, Texas that happens to be the first band to use the word psychedelic on their album. So, uh, welcome guys. How's it going? Um, you don't really need to look at my mug, so let's flip around. Uh, I'm here to do, uh, yeah, it was kind of interesting. They were a hippie band, and then basically they went to hate Ashbury because they were friends with Janis Joplin and the Quicksilver Messenger Service. And they decide, let's go to San Francisco because that's where all the hip cats go. And they get to hate Ashbury, and then they decide they're like more cowboys than hippies. And uh, they're kind of racist, and you know, a whole bunch of other things. They're from like rural outside of Austin. And basically, uh, one of them ends up moving back there later. But uh, yeah, so long story, not about fish. Okay, here we go. On to the fish, and uh, as always with any podcast or vlogcast, I don't know what to call these things, feel free to ask any questions. But if you saw my recent video, I basically tore this tank apart, and it's a long video. It's kind of like behind the scenes that I posted this morning. It, I, I tore it apart, literally not a single plant in there. Um and scrub down the walls, scrub down the filter, new filter, medium, uh, and also same rock though. Uh, this has not been a dirted tank ever, and so part of what I was gonna chat about today is redoing a tank that is part substrate that is active and part inert substrate. So what I chose to do here in that I don't want to wait forever for um, my tanks to like basically, so I'm kind of impatient, but I already had this tank set up, right? And I thought I had lost one of my fish, unfortunately. Um, and I couldn't find her anywhere. It turned out she was in the sponge filter back here and she was in the center tube of it and had burrowed under the rock and gotten up there somehow. But I had literally pulled it out. It was the last thing I pulled out. There was nothing in there. I saw all the other fish in murky water that was drained down to here, and she wasn't in there. And I'd already searched to see if she jumped. So, not in there. Too bad. So, I decided that I was going to redo the tank. As soon as I put down the, the uh, filter again, I was like... Oh my gosh, there she is. She came out because she was, you know, scared that she hadn't been in water. But she had climbed into the tube. So I redid this scape using almost all the same materials. I added a little bit of sand and I added not even a pound of dragon stone to existing stone to make it look like I have a little bit of money. But slowly that will get replaced. Now, this tank originally, I usually keep about three root tabs uh in each half like somewhere so like a root tab here root tab here and maybe one back back over there um, that's kind of how it was when I went searching for them though the last time I put them in was maybe three months ago and when I went searching for them no root tabs to be found so kind of odd but I decided to re root tab it they guess they dissolved quicker than normal and um, also by the way you can see that my pelvicochromis teniatus Nigerian red, or as they will now be called, uh, they will now just be called uh, red striped crebensis. So the male's there, the female's probably near the filter still. I'm hoping she has eggs in there. I don't know. So hopefully she has eggs in there, which would be a great spot because of all the aeration and the filtration, the nutrients coming down so the babies can eat algae and stuff. Um, I've had new um, sand put in, and I realize that this is like sugar sand. It's very fine, like uh, supposedly Sahara Desert sold by uh, National Geographic sand. And it is so fine that it's too fine. It's definitely going to settle. But it looks nice for now. I'm going to get some larger grain sand later. It was just cheap and on sale. And then what I did was I replaced some of my substrate 
with active substrate with a that, let's see, there's a mix in here uh, that smelled, oh, just god-awful. Uh, it, it was Eco-Complete and Amazonia, um, or ADA, yeah. So, and it was in a friend's tank, and it had been in there for three or four months, so all the ammonia, like the dangerous levels, had already off-gassed and, and gone out into his plants and his tank and killed his fish because he was impatient. Um so in any case, I got that. He's downsizing some tanks, and I decided that I was going to put it into my shrimp tank, which I'll show you in a little bit, uh, so that I can start bringing down that pH lower, because in the near future, I will be, uh, I will be taking care of uh, caradina shrimp and trying to raise some. I've had them in the past. They do okay in Seattle water. They never, like, thrive to the point where they were reproducing well. I got one litter or something, and that was about it, or one hatch. Um, so basically what I did here is I made island zones of the most nutritious soil. So there's a zone here, there's another zone back in here, and there's another one tucked under here of the soil. And it's done thicker than everything else because I, I will probably spread it back out. And also, this is... You probably can't tell very well, but this slopes upward about three or four inches to the back, and it needs to slope upwards even more. So I underestimated that. So I, what I'll probably do is get some gravel or some rocks or fill a bag, like a just a plastic bag or a mesh bag, a media mesh, fill it with rocks and put that along the back in a strip there and then put sand up over that so that it draws your eye to a horizon line a little bit better than it does now. Now, this is the first time I've played with paths. Uh, I've also made a little bonsai tree. I'm just going to let the moss grow on that for now because it needs trimming. Uh, but I, I just wanted to, it was unhealthy moss. And I'm going to see if I can get it up to snuff by letting it be out in the air like that. So I, I wrapped that around two twigs of a piece of, man, uh, what was it? I don't know, might have been manzanita that had been really sun bleached and debarked, but it had been in the tank already. So I took a floral wire, which will rust, and I wrapped that around it, hoping that it clings on with that in a month that I can take the floral wire off. Fishing line you can use, and a lot of people do. Thread is probably the best thing, didn't have any handy, but uh, the thread is good because it'll, cotton thread will or originally uh, is used because. Do you know what causes a haze on my Anubius? It literally looks like my leaves are turning white. That's not good. There's an, uh, an internet name for that, which is just Anubius rot. They believe that it's a fungal rot, maybe even in combination with a bacterial rot. You can try, um, hold on, let me show you what products you can give a shot with. Um, you can try something like this or erythromycin um, which is a bacterial antibacterial for fish but sometimes it helps with that what i would do if you can is yank it out of the water so it's not uh, immersed any or Im submerged anymore and just submerge uh, immerse it for a little bit so that the roots are still in the water and uh you can, on its own, you can give it lots of nutrients if you have liquid fertilizer or like part of a root tab to put in the water. It won't overdose your your plant as long as you give it just like a, a little piece of that. And you can do that and then put it in a bowl or a cup. In fact, I'm doing that with another plant that started to get blackbeard and then it started to rot. And it's been over here, hold on, for a little while doing that. Let me get everything out of the way but it looked really bad for a while, and now it's kind of coming back to life, kind of growing back up, and I just put it in a little like dog bowl, mixing bowl, uh, and I put a little bit of the general cure, which has an antifungal, and then also a, the, uh, the uh, erythromycin, and that seemed to help a little bit. Other people suggest um, with with um, like blackbeard algae and certain things like that, uh, that it that hydrogen peroxide helps. So you could always try diluting a little bit of hydrogen peroxide on water in a water bottle and spraying that on if it's just like a fine thing. But my guess is if you change its where it lives underwater, that that fungus, which is a parasite, 
will be confused by that change and you might be able to get it better if you can get it out if you can't spot treating look up uh injection spot tre treating or uh, a uh, hypodermic needle or turkey baster most people use a hypodermic needle because it's more specifically aimed um but i know if finding a hypodermic needle is not an easy task slash classy task that you want to uh, get involved with. That's totally understandable. So I also wanted to show you guys that I have this um, Michelin. It's, whoa, it's supposed to be uh, a crystal, black crystal uh, bee shrimp. I don't know. It's kind of yellow and dirty, but I took it and it's a canary in the coal mine because I haven't had anything. This has tangerine tiger and black crystal in its line, according to the guy. I don't know that much. I will pull it like you showed with that plant you have. Thanks for the advice. Yeah, good luck. Let me know how that goes, PJF. And uh, yeah, because if you look up Anubius rot or Anubius fungus, you might find more. Maybe they've figured out more since I've last read about it, but uh, it is prone to that. Is an African plant. Uh, how hot are you keeping your water is the other thing because, you know, African plants live in warm water, but like 82 to 86 is pretty hot if it's up in that region. I know other plants can get cyanobacteria, which is that blue-green algae, or... Um, different rot on them so you know sometimes temperature change can also help uh, sometimes it can make it worse sometimes it can shock the plant uh, so it's kind of a crap shoot depending on the plant I don't want to give like blanket advice with that also you can see that the little gudgeons are growing um, one in there is definitely a uh, not a gudgeon but a uh, endler I don't know how that happened in the in in the twist of this crazy story, I don't know how that happened unless females evolve or uh, grow up different than males. But these are definitely gudgeons. These uh, you can see they've got that yellow color, and maybe I don't know if you can see with the focus on this YouTube camera, but they've got a fin that runs all the way down their spine, and then they've also got a fin from their their anal area all the way to their tail. So those were the mystery fry about four months ago, and they're really taking, sorry, no, that makes you guys dizzy. They're really taking a while to mature. So the other thing I did with the substrate that I got uh, is I added it to the shrimp tank, and I added a lot of it, and it was dirty and cloudy and a mess. So I'm gonna suggest when you do that, if you get it in a bag like such, you get the air out, Take it and put it right towards the bottom, kill the filter for a minute, um, and then let a little bit out at a time. Time for supper. All right, man, have a good one. Uh, now are you, is supper, as my family in Texas says, is that like late lunch? Or is that your dinner, as we would say in the north? Um, because my family says supper, and it actually means dinner, but late lunch is another in, uh, meaning of it. So I'm just curious. Um, but have a good meal, whatever it is. I hope you have family or friends with you. Dinner. All right, cool. All right, take it easy, partner. Um, so when I was replacing this substrate, I put it in with a bag like such put the bag underwater, kept it closed all the way to the bottom, and then I kind of shook a little bit out, and it still got cloudy, but it's a lot better than dropping that substrate straight in. And this has already been in a tank for months, so it's really broken down, and uh, I mean, the, there there's still structure and form to it, otherwise I wouldn't have used it, but it's not so much here for plants. This tank is my shrimp tank right now, and it's kind of on hold. There's five painted fires adults in here and they're not reproducing i don't know what their deal is uh all the other shrimp were doing fine these are some random coals that i've been pulling um that just have been growing slow and they're from like months ago but the three red adults are still hanging in there tight um these coals all the red ones have really reddened up so whatever strain i had where i was selling them to the fish store as like less than a dollar cherry shrimp for retail 
oops, my bad, they turn out to actually grow up to be better than uh, most that would look bad when they're little. So these ones will be going into my big 40 gallon, uh, the red ones. And the blues are ones that were not good enough to keep in this tank. And I just, I, I don't know why I'm, well, I do. It's probably algae and fish poop. But these blues are so electric, and I love it. They hang out right up top. Uh, they hang out on the tops of all these rocks. There's another one there, another one there, one on the side. We've got another blue one there. So I've got maybe 8 to 12 in here right now. Oh, there's two more right there. I guess they're all out for you guys. Wow. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six on the side there and seven up there, and an eighth lurking around this corner. So that's eight adult blue shrimp that all look of high grade to me. I will keep them. I will not call those ones. Some of them, when they start getting this dark, I start to question whether they're, I want that dark of shrimp, but I know a lot of people... Um, do want that darker shrimp. Now this one over here I wanted to point out it has some banding and it's the difference between blue and light blue but that might indicate that somewhere in its line or it is a, mut a mutant uh, starting to go in. What would a decent light for a 20 gallon with Anubius and Java Fern? Almost any light would do for a 20 gallon with Anubius and Java Fern. All, honestly, like a desk lamp would, t would keep them alive. Now, they're not going to flourish and grow like crazy, but it would work. Um, Anubius and Java Fern, great choices. If you added, uh, Maybe a certain uh, Bucephalandra, certain crypts, definitely crypts, uh, like these crypts don't need much light at all. That being said, they can do better with light, but other plants, like my java fern, uh, it just sends out runners if I hit it with light. That's kind of all it does. Now, right here in this corner, I wanted to, I mean, so spend as much as you want to make the tank look good in the light. Uh, I have this light here, which is, I think it's a, an Aquion light, and it was, it only has red and blue LEDs mixed with two rows of white, and it's not great for growing. The thing is, if you've got a 20 tall, like this one is, you probably want something with higher par or light strength by the substrate, because every inch you go down, um, it's an exponential loss at, at whatever unit you want to say, but however far you go down, it exponentially loses intensity of light as it cuts through the tank. Now, also I wanted to show you guys that all these little fish that were hiding in the back have settled in, and they are out in the boot, uh, I'm happy to report. And the coolest part of all is that the shrimp are getting along with them. I know I need to clean the algae on this one. It had CO2 running on it, so it's kind of grown some algae. It's got some hair algae, too, because I took the Siamese algae eater out because he was bugging the baby, um, the baby fry, and I haven't had them do that very often, but he was. So. so, yeah, blue shrimp are just, like, taking over this webcast, like... Pay attention to me, pay attention to me. Um, so I'm hoping that some of them get pregnant soon and we can get some more blue baby shrimp going. Some more blue, blue baby shrimp action going on in here. Um, I just think that looks nice too. I can't change the focus with this camera set up in uh, the YouTube's mode. But we've got the Endler babies. These are the ones that when they grow up and I can tell what gender they are and they get some coloring and I can select which one I'm going to use. Also, you can see we've got that hair algae that I was talking about. I'm going to reach in there after this cast and get rid of it. Um, <clears throat> but basically, he's not doing his job. Not that they eat hair algae anyways. But, but when those babies grow up, then we will, uh, we will start getting them out to folks. Um, and the adults, you know what they look like, I think. The leopard, rainbow endlers, Lucas Bretz is the one who originally bred them. And then now I've refined my strain to mostly have spade tails. But um, quite honestly, the ones I send out may have like flag tails or uh, lyre tails or, you know, delta tails. Probably won't have delta tails. But they may have 
a slightly off from a perfect spade because that's what I'm going for. In the last batch, I only kept two males. Um, and the females, I guess, uh, the only thing I would like to see in the female line as I adjust it is the ability to tell the females apart from other emblers. So maybe a little bit of leopard spot on the tail or something would be cool. Um, I'm not sure there. Now, <clears throat> we have a fish up here, a Celestial Pearl Danio, that seems to be distressed. Uh, I don't know what, what's going on. We're going to see if it moves. Yeah, it's definitely distressed. Um, hey, man. Welcome, Mick. Uh, I, thank you for watching my stream. Thank you for watching my videos. My videos are usually more instructive than my ramblings on here. I just like to have a time to connect with folks and then kind of update like what I'm doing rather than in the video so that people can ask questions of like, when did that happen? How did that happen? How do I get one of those? That looks stupid to undo that or whatever. But um, this CPD, I know just by the color there, that pale orange was not one of these bright orange ones that I took. I took one of the pale ones to the uh, aquascaping contest. And I'm afraid that it may be slammed into something and hit swim bladder because it's been swimming all off. And now it's really not looking good just hanging out at that angle. So whenever one fish is sick, I always keep an eye on him. I'll probably end up moving him down to the quarantine tank, um, turning the heat down, adding some catapa leaf probably, um, and giving feeding him some special live food, which maybe you'll help. Let's see if, is that a he or is she? I'm actually gonna, I think I can do this with one hand since it's sick. I think it'll just, yeah, it just let me. So I'm gonna put it down into the shrimp tank, which has no fish other than those babies in it. And I'm not worried about these coals getting eaten, especially in the state that that fish is in. Um, but let's get that fish out of here. Um, let's see here. All right, but I have a bad feeling that when your fish is at the top not floating right, it, it doesn't unfold very well most of the time. Did we get the fish out? Is the fish in there? Yeah, see, fish just sunk straight to the bottom. Uh, its swim bladder, I think, is broken. That may have happened when I was transferring it. It's been swimming all wonky. Um, the important thing to do there is uh, I'll, I'll, what I'll be doing is putting an air stone in, but until then I'll turn this breeder box towards the light and allow it to... Um, Greetings from Germany! Man, you started something. I began watching your videos two and a half months ago and now I have six tanks. <laughs> That's awesome, dude! I'm so glad that I've ruined your life. Um, no, I hope it enriches your life. This tank right now is a, uh, oh yeah, hit that like button. Thanks, thanks Buster, That I appreciate that. Uh, and in Germany, where are you at in Germany? Uh, Sinus Craig, uh, which is kind of funny, because Craig in English, I don't know if you, do you speak fluent English and everything? Um, but Craig can mean like a hole or like a rocky crater. And, uh, oh, just sunk my hospital box. Um, and somehow I turned the, oh, drip of water did that. Um, Bavaria, very cool. HN, what's up, man? Uh, welcome. I'm going to turn the heat up just a bit in this tank. It's been cold outside again, and this tank doesn't seem, it. you know, this, uh, a word of advice, the smaller the tank you have, the harder it is. It's not easier. It's harder to control things. Um, T. Hang, how's it going, man? Welcome. Uh, also in here, so that fish hit the deck and is not... Is it floating anywhere? I don't think so. So, unfortunately, you may have... Yeah, you're probably witnessing the demise of the Celestial Pearl. In fact, the shrimp is actually cleaning the fish while it's alive which is pretty brutal um but sometimes believe it or not i've seen them do that when there's a gill fungus or something and they've actually like gotten dead uh like like hole in the head and, and things like that like bad infections sometimes shrimp will clean that because they like dead tissue 
So um, this is my mismatched box of shrimp that just are like, where did you come from? Over here, we've got some more baby shrimp that are still hanging out. This is the trimmings left over from my re-aquascape. I'm gonna go back over there because, uh, have you ever had fungus on cherry shrimp? Yes, I have. I've had it where they have a weird white crystallized looking coat of it. And I don't know what causes it, uh, specifically the name. There's a couple fungus out there. Um, but that is something that quite honestly I should not speak to uh, as I do not know. But I will do some research. What I did is uh, what I was told by a pet store owner in the area that I trust, which was get rid of the whole batch of like 10 shrimp that I had at the time in a little tank. Uh, but yes, I, shrimp do get fungus, and there are a lot of them that are not treatable. Uh, yellow fungus on their belly and didn't know what to do. What ended up happening there, T? So you can see here in the new aquascape, the male is out and about. I don't know what's up with that. He might be hungry. His colors are fairly bright still. Uh, if he comes out, you'll probably be able to see that there's... Um, purple under that yellow there's red and blue and purple and the stripes underneath the leopard print there on his tail and the female was hiding well inside of back here once i rescape so there's something about that air filter she really likes um yeah thanks for uh saying you like the scape so i did post a video recently about this aquascape it's interesting, so it's really changed the dynamic of the fish in here. By the way, she is so pregnant that her spine is like almost broken. So I hope she gives birth soon. Uh, and that is an endler, by the way. She is a Japanese blue leer tail or lyre tail endler and has that emerald green shimmer dot like the male here does. And then I have a guppy, half guppy, half endler cross here as a female that has yellow and kind of a violet in her. Uh, and I wanted to have some females that uh, that the the blue the blue endlers the females from them are really plain. They're like this. You can see slight blue iridescence to their tail but uh, you can't pull them out from a crowd. So you can't, like, if you can't have two kinds of uh, guppies together. I couldn't put all the females in one tank and select knowing that that's one. So my ultimate goal is to play around with the male's characteristics here. And he's always flirty on camera. He always does his little mating dance on camera now. Um, but so I got some of these females a generation ago and cross them with, so he is technically their dad, I know, line breeding is kind of gross, but that's her dad, and she had a mother who had a bright yellow and uh, fuchsia tail. And so that is an attempt, we'll see how it goes, what her babies look like, but that's an attempt to get a line where I can tell the females apart so that then I can put all the females and all the males in one tank, put two together in a breeder box, and then set the females back into the female tank for like a month or two with her fry, and then let them go. So we've also got fry in here. We've also got my killifish. I love my clown killifish or striped killifish. They've got that just beautiful blue eye. I, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow these vines that I'm planting to grow up over the top more because the killifish really like that. And this vine, I can't remember, or it's a stem plant, but I can't remember the exact name of it, but it has a beautiful um, purple color underneath, underneath the leaves here. So um, I can't remember the name of it. I was It was given to me during the aquascaping contest by a friend who was like, here, you probably won't be able to find this in the store. So have some and I took one like four foot long section from his ginormous tank clipped it up and put it in here and it seems to be doing okay also I cut down the kabamba a lot the purple kabamba but it's starting to grow green shoots even the next day which is great um, I don't like how this is set up for flow in the tank. Aesthetically, it looks okay to me. Like, I mean, if I, I don't want to hang off the back filter, but I'm not made of money, so I'm not going to do anything about it. Um, but 
basically the hang off the back dumps right onto the aeration, which is less than optimal. I mean, that corner's super aerated, but the flow over here is pretty dead. If you see like the surface of the water, things aren't moving too much. So I'm gonna need to either get a power head um, and maybe put that in this, this corner, or actually maybe I'll hide it back behind this, this rock here, um, <clears throat> just to kind of keep things moving around. And that will then create somewhat of a vortex in the center. But I do have uh, the, the important fish in the tank, which are the ruby tetras to me, the celestial pearl danios, uh, and the, uh, well, I mean, the Japanese endlers, they're important, but then I've got the gold ring one, the gold ring endlers in, or, uh, sorry, gold ring Danios up in there too with the leopard spots and the gold rings around their eyes or bronze ring, depending on what color you see there. Um, but yeah, so that is one idea is to move the endlers out of here. I may be getting another tank. And if that is the case, then this will become an African tank species wise. It'll be cribs. Also, I got more cribs. I know I talked about that live on another cast, but I don't think you are the same crowd that was there. And that's why I do multiple casts. But in here, I'll also show you while I'm over here, uh, are the endlers going into your summer tub? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's kind of the plan. It's just, Summer slash spring is taking a long time to get here this year. Um, but yeah, so I'm fighting hair algae in here too. And I know this all looks like it's glowing neon green, but it's just the camera because it sucks on YouTube. Um, let me pull the light forward a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. But these, these are cold red cherry shrimp out of the other tank. These are the ones that I thought I should throw away. And... They have turned so red in here, whatever it is, eating the fish poop or whatever, that they're almost up to like a Sakura grade or something like that. In fact, I, I would venture to say they are. There's the evil gudgeon that bites everyone. That's the male. He's the mean one. Uh, uh, and there's the female coming into the picture. Now, here's a gudgeon lesson. Males have a rounded head like a bullet or a bulldog. Females have a bit more of a bulge in the belly and it's more yellow, whereas males have a greener to translucent bulge in their belly and more blue on their pectoral fins frequently. Plus, they're always flaring, so you can see how those fins are sticking up versus hers are down. Uh, they're really territorial, and this couple has used every corner in the tank so far to reproduce. Their fry have gotten kind of snatched up by the tetras that you were asking about, and these are a uh, lemon tetra, and it is a, a, a strain of lemon tetra that's called the orange eye lemon tetra. Uh, yes, I like to add crushed coral tea in my... Um, tubs outside if I have endlers. If I have something like Danios or um, let's see, what's another one? Any sort of small Tetra, then no, I would not. But what I do is I, I get Rubbermaid tubs, just like the one sitting back here that I use for water changes. Um, are my Threadfin rainbows at their max size? I don't have any Threadfin rainbows anymore, unfortunately. I actually traded them. I have some fork tail rainbows and I have some uh, dwarf neon rainbows. And these dwarf neon rainbows are close to adult size now. Um, the, the male will get taller, he'll get more of a hump on his head and his mouth will look weirder. But he's pretty much an adult. My thread fins are at a friend's house because they got one. They got the they got big. So compared to the other fish, they got almost probably three and a half or yeah, probably three and a half inches long. They grew and they look so cute and little when they're young. But uh, they got big, and then I kept having to be on alert because they would choke on food. Like they it would get stuck in their throat. Even when I crushed it up really small for them, that was a problem. So that's another issue. As I said, I have these new spotlights too that are really intense. Ah. And uh, they, they light up the tank phenomenally from across the room. And like you can just see like the new growth up here. That's from like since the aquascaping contest. So 
this whole crown from here up is new in four days. And these lights were $29 a piece or something like that. Um, and a friend sold them to me used for 20 So same friend who has the rainbow uh, fish right now. But he has them in with angel fish, and that's another nippy fish. And I was like, dude, I don't think that's going to work. But it actually, they, he says they're getting along well, and they're probably three and a half inches or three inches long. Um, also down in here, uh, where do you buy those lights? I will show you in one moment after I answer a couple more questions that I'm lagging behind on Mick. Um, so these yellow tetras are from a specific tributary in the Amazon, of which I cannot pronounce the name, of the uh, southern... Southern uh, Uruguayan Amazon, I want to say. And I got them at an auction from fellow club members. Where is the tank with the plants from H2O? I will show you, T. Um, I will show you that, and I will show you the fish thing after I finish this. So, um, Also, there's a odd glow light Danio in this tank because he did not play well with others, and he's also grown ginormous. But these... Um, Lemon Tetras I've done an episode on. Um, make me a mod. I am the Shrimp King. Uh, yeah, I might need a mod next time. Message me at Alexander J. Williamson uh, at gmail.com and we can chat. Um, you could get a 30-inch aqua neat light on eBay for the same cost. Okay, so let me show you a couple things. Um, so let me finish the lemon tetra thing. So these are lemon tetras, orange-eyed lemon tetras. They have focus. Man, focus on YouTube is just terrible. It doesn't let you play with those settings. Uh, but they have a red pupil or an iris around their pupil. And so that's, and then they've got orange on their fins and they have kind of a tequila sunrise guppy look. The clear part of their body is very lemony yellow so unlike a lot of lemon tetras that are just kind of clear and translucent they will color up like this if you put them in a heavily planted tank in a group and you give them uh landmarks so tetras uh lemon tetras need landmarks so like this like this high and low points uh so that the males can claim those and then they can basically hold off the rest of the crowd uh, also, while I'm over here, uh, I wanted to show you my new, uh, and I clearly need to clean the glass down here. You don't notice till it's on camera. I, in real life, it just looks slightly hazy. Um, but I got six of these uh, Pelvica Chromis Molloway, Molloway, um, M-O-L-I-W-E, uh, cribs. So they'll be similar to my other cribs. You can check out my old videos on that as well. Um, but yeah, so let me show you the box that the light came in because it's definitely a buy on eBay, Japanese, or I mean Chinese type situation. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is actually really nice live stream. Uh, yeah, you know, I like it. We're at a point right now in the channel where usually I only get like 20 or 30 people at at a time at most and so I can actually chat with you guys which is nice um, and I can actually did it come with the cord attached or did you have to install it I had to install or I mean it came with it in the box but two separate pieces there is no uh, power adapter for it though which makes me think it may be slightly uh, you know prone to fire but I've got everything on a power strip, and I actually... Hold on, let me pull it all up. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> right now these lights, they get pretty warm, and you can see they get rid of the evaporation where they were sitting. Uh, also, I mean, they're hot. They're hot enough that you don't want to keep your hand on it too long. They're hot to the touch, but uh, you have the same... 20 watt doing great. Yeah, they're supposed to be kind of suspended like this up higher. And the par rating though, down at the bottom, so this tank is two and a half feet tall. It's a really weird tall bow front. It's 40 gallons instead of 37, and they added like two inches to the old 20, whatever it was, 28 inch one. So it's like 30 inches tall or whatever. Um, 
Is it really? I feel like my voice is not soothing to listen to, but all right. So, um, any case, uh, it's a 30 watt Cree LEDs, which I've seen in a lot of different places. When you look at it, it's got what temperature you can ask, like you can order different temperatures and different voltages. Uh, and then you can also, so see, it says 20 brand new. That was at the swap meet sale thing. And then MSRP, well, I'm sure that's what they meant, but they wrote MRP 30. Um, but my buddy is from uh, Southeast Asia, speaks Cantonese and uh, Mandarin. And so the in, in the inside directions on this are all in Russian and Chinese. Uh, but the outside packaging is in English. It's kind of weird. But nevertheless, they've been here now three weeks. They have just caused this tank to overgrow. And I don't have CO2 running on this tank or anything. They are warm enough that they heat this tank. I would venture to say if you put them on like a 20 tall, they would change the temperature a good couple degrees. Um, so there's that. Now, what was the other thing I was going to answer? Um... Uh, really nice. You wanted to keep... Yeah, I did want to keep discus. I used to keep discus. I raised them for a little bit, thinking it would be, like, a way to be balling with money. Um, but, like, I kind of saturated the Seattle discus market, and the people who are really into discus already have them. People who aren't seem to keep a couple, and then that's kind of it. Um, and so they want, like, the people who are really into them want, um, larger better, bigger, brighter strain. So unless you're doing the high-end stuff, uh, yeah. Yeah, so a 30-inch Aquanite light. What does the Aquanite light throw? Uh, oh, the H2O plants. That's what I was going to get to. Um, so the, the Aqua, these lights throw crazy light. I mean, this is daylight outside. And when I don't have this, when I have this on, you can see the other tank glowing. You can see that's from this little light with six uh, LEDs that have a focus on them. So yeah, these Cree LEDs, which are in a lot of products, made by Stason. Um, they have a 60 watt that is so blinding and hot. It, it literally killed all of, when I tried it out, when my buddy let me try it out, it killed all of my um, floating plants. Like it burned them out overnight or over in a, in a day. By the next morning, I noticed they were all fried. So it's too strong it, or it needs to be hung well above a tank. It's for like a deep, deep tank. But they do a good job of glowing. I could use one. They have a like not quite a one or a forty five. What would it be? One twenty degree spread on the light, so it kind of spreads like this. But it it doesn't linearly spread. It's more of gradations, and then it's more of a spot. It really is. So, but yeah. So then these guys. Hopefully these will grow up. I'll put them in a different tank, and they will have babies. Uh, these will be if you want to google it uh tiniatus uh or just look up m o l i w e uh cribensis or cribs k r i b s um that's what they'll be so in this tank we have a couple of the plants i got from h2o uh let's see which ones are in here right now so we've got the the green wavy part of it's back in there and you really can't see it so let me show you better the tank that has the stuff that you'll recognize from the unboxing video so we've got the red uh tiger lotus which is right here and in this setting it doesn't let me play with like how the contrast is but it's actually really dark Broke the glass lid off my 160 reptile pot lights. It was 60 watt full spectrum. For what price do King Kong pandas go for in your country? Uh, that's a hard one. If you know somebody who raises them, you can get them really affordably and like, you know, 15 bucks. If you don't, like 60 bucks or something. But I think the average is maybe $40 in person for King Kong panda. But I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm not positive on that one. Um, just, I, I don't know all the pricing right offhand, but I, I want to say that's what, like Flip Aquatics list things for pretty close to what 
it is in general around the country unless you know a breeder. Yeah, $40 each, I would assume. Yeah, like any of those red wine or uh, King Kong, like yellow King Kongs can be like anywhere from 15 to 40 depending on it. But they've kind of gone ridiculous. It's got to it's got to stop somewhere. Like the blue bolts are kind of cheap now. Oh, man, 3 euros a piece. See, yeah. It's nuts. Same with these fish. So these uh these uh red Nigerian cribs, they're everywhere in the Czech Republic, I've been told, and they are I don't know. I mean, I want to say they're really cheap. Um, the, these cribs over there are two bucks over here. They're 70 like at a shop now from a breeder. You're going to pay like 30, uh, or 60 to 80 a pair. I paid 80 for this pair, which felt ridiculous, but as long as I can resell the babies and I do have a lot of people asking about the babies. So we'll see what happens now. He doesn't like the rescape this aquascape. Um, I use some of the H2O plants. I use some of the Dragonstone. And he's breathing kind of heavily and hanging out near the oxygenated part of the tank. So I'm going to keep an eye on him. I don't know why he's doing that. I mean, they've both been hidden and breeding, doing their mating dance and shaking and shimmying. And, like, I know they're tired uh, and always want food, which before they didn't eat that much. Um, so I'll keep an eye on them. But So, yeah, so here we've got the two types of Limnophilia aromaticas. They're really beautiful. I cut the tall ones in half and planted them in some uh, active substrate. We've also got um, the, where's the green wavy at? Mm, there's more green wavy over here somewhere. Uh, here's the fire moss on the stone, by the way. The moss on the tree was the uh, Christmas moss. Oh, here we, uh, and then this was, oh, this is the one that I have a hard time pronouncing. Hold on one sec. I have a list that I can spell out the plant for you. Sorry, guys. Um, this plant was a Homa Lamena uh, SP Secadeu South. So it's some Borneo plant, but I'll let you see. It's uh, this one. And I, uh, Homolomena species Cicadeu South. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's what it looks like. It looks like dying partially, honestly. It's not anything to write home about. Here was the Anubius he sent, kind of small clippings, but it was all free. So, I mean, he just sent it as like, here you go, look at it. Um, there's one of the another, uh, the gold coin Anubius he sent is, no, that's the old one. Here's the new one. Uh, and it has nice striations on the leaf. I wonder if it has any, like, coffee folius tendencies. It has already yellowed a little bit, but that, I think that could be just a shipping issue. It got really cold. The box was kind of cold when it got here, because nothing, it was all plants, so it wasn't heated. Uh, and then he also sent plant anchors made out of lead, which I've seen used before, but I do worry that they could have an effect on the actual fish but apparently it says that the lead is okay like it's in a form that's not soluble in water and the fish can't eat so i want to do research on that but i did use it in the aquascaping comp competition uh that video is online too if you want to check it out dustin from dustin's fish tanks will probably be putting that video up i hung out with him while he was in town and uh hopefully man eh, i shouldn't say it yet but i've got plans with a fellow uh, fairly large YouTuber, hopefully to make some shrimp things happen in the near future, because I want to focus on some shrimp. And I know this channel is supposed to be the history, uh, the secret history, which is just to say you don't know it yet, or I don't know it yet. Um, living in your aquarium, but I do want to get back to videos that are, um, like I have one that I'm working on right now that's about the history just ordered a States and Light. All right. Yeah, maybe I should leave links to that because there are like affiliate programs uh, 
where you can get a little kickback for recommending stuff. And I'd never like recommend something that sucks, honestly. Like even if someone gives me something for free, I'm not gonna be like, oh, what a great product it's, if it's a piece of junk. Um, what else did we get? We got, um, oh, mini bulbitis uh, over in here too. I don't know if you can make it out from the other one. They're kind of crowded. And then the Red Tiger Lotus, which is really beautiful, and the Aromatica, the Limnophilia Aromatica Mini and regular size are side by side. I can't tell the difference. I mean, maybe a half inch or a quarter inch longer is the only difference in size of the Leafs. Maybe in their total, like, uh, in their terminal height. Hello, thanks for continuing to put up such great... Hey, thank you a lot, D. I really appreciate that. I'm trying, I'm new to YouTube, you know, it's been a few months. I'm getting things down, and basically I want to break this down for you guys. So I want to do YouTube live streams as a way to interact um, interact with you guys verbally and show you what's going on and chat and just kind of have a community feel other than the comment section because I lose comments on, like, old posts. Like, it doesn't alert me all the time, and then, like, it doesn't alert me when someone responds if there's been a bunch of them. It buries them, and I don't have time to go searching every video I've ever posted every day or anything. Um, so yeah, so this is a good time for that. I can show you when new things are going on. Like, I mean, I could have done a video on how to make a cheesy little bonsai tree. That that will need lots of trimming, but the moss needs to grow in first. Um, but this whole thing started because I lost her mate, uh, or his mate, I should say. Do you use any plant furs? Yeah, I actually do. I use a uh, Easy Green from Aquarium Co-op. I like that. Um, Easy Green is a good one. And then I use Root Tabs as well, like um, Fluval or something like that usually. And then I have spots of active soil. I would have all active soil in this tank, like something like ADA or Amazon, Amazonia or something like that. Um, but I... Uh, I already had this tank up and running before I decided to like really get into CO2 type plants and I need to get a new CO2 setup. So I really am hoping that like Patreon and hopefully when I hit a thousand then you start getting a little bit of revenue but maybe it's like 10 bucks a month or something but then I could be like okay I can spend that towards CO2 and then I could start growing some cooler plants to show you guys. Uh, also the mini uh, Nana Petite, you all know what that looks like, Anubius. Um, is there and then there's a funky so that tangle that I showed you over here and over here there's a better shot of it next to that snail um, uh, stay away from sex politics and religion uh, just keep it up takes a lot of work on the videos keep up the fun and interesting content the fish fam will support you thank you um, I'm torn on if I stay away from politics I don't want to get into politics in the sense of like um, I don't want to take sides on politics unless something's like egregious, but there are politics that someone's going to get mad about. Like the fact that we have, um, that a company has hydroelectric dams in the Amazon is a political issue. And the fact that we will now never see L046s or 47s or 333s, so zebras and leopard frog plecos will no longer ever be exported from Brazil uh, because they're under 50 feet of water where they would normally hang out in the shallows and eat logs that fall because of the rise and fall of flooding the rainforest. Uh, so they may go extinct for all we know. We don't know that. Uh, but they also, their spot's been ruined. Now, another one to talk about where I had to talk about politics or I wanted to talk about politics and I don't mean to offend anyone, is talking about um, Myanmar because we're getting all our, our Danios there. Same with like the Congo. So I will talk about civil strife and things like that. I will mention, I mentioned in another video, NAFTA, and some people thought I was bashing Trump or, or loving Trump or whatever, but I don't want to get into that. I was just pointing out that if we start imposing tariffs on trade partners, or if we lift all tariffs in, in that it will have an impact on trade. 
And if you want to talk politics, we'll talk privately. But that is part of history to me. Like, why do you think we have these animals from these places? Um, uh, bringing attention to extinction or a species threat is important. There's also conflict in Africa. Yes, so the Congo in Africa is going through a really... Um, I see dams as needed for drinking water and cheap, clean power. What other countries do really isn't our concern. Um, that's true in that it's not our concern, but you won't see any plecos, and I'm a fish channel. So, I mean, I, I do talk about it. Like that, that Also, the fact that um, Myanmar has had years of horror... Yeah, okay, D just said that too. Uh, and we only got in in 2006, and we got Celestial Pearl Danios, we got Gold Ring Danios, we've got all sorts of licorice fish, and all, I mean, there's fish that we still don't know. There's different types of glass catfish that are teeny tiny ones. Um, and yes, that is their business. They're, they're Muslim versus Buddhist uh, ethnic tensions. Uh, the the Buddhists happen to be part of the military government, and they have gone in with machetes and killed some estimate tens of thousands of refugees of the Rohingya people. Because of that, scientists have pulled out of the area, and only private guides who are generally protected by the heroin farmers in the area known as Shan, which is on the... Uh, the Thai border. Um, I mean, those are kind of issues. Like if we are used to a fish, I mean, why do you think we have all these Brazilian fish? It's because of the, uh, the, um, what is it? The Monroe doctrine where we decided that we were going to take over the Western hemisphere and make trade partners to get oil and things from those regions. And in the process, we stationed people all over uh, South America to exert influence and be uh, a great side effect of that was now I have an entire tank full of uh, Venezuelan and Brazilian fish, which is where our oil companies were. Um, I, I'm a history and uh, I was, so I did pre-law and then I changed to history, got a history and anthropology degree for teaching and then I got a master's in archaeology uh, with a history background. So that's kind of where um, where I, I look at this. Do you have a native fish tank? No. All of our native fish around here are pretty large except saltwater ones. I don't want to deal with saltwater. It's cold. Our water here is uh, like close to zero Celsius sometimes. It's like three Celsius or something like that. Wait, four Celsius? It's like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, depending. And I, it, it, that's like, I'd have to have a chiller to keep a tank that cold. There's really cool things like octopus and things like that, but yeah, don't want to deal with it. So in here, you may think that that's a Neocaridina. It's not. That's a Malawa shrimp up there. And uh, I have five of them in here, and they're kind of cool. They turn colors, they turn black, they turn clear, and they turn tan. And I have a pregnant female somewhere. She's been hanging out down in here lately. But at the beginning of the cast, you guys saw that um, I am keeping the blue uh, Neocaridina up here. I want to add more of the... Um, there's a black crystal somewhere in here. And I want to put more Caridina in here because the um, the uh, all the Danios that I have, they actually come from really soft water too, and they like low TDS, and they they don't mind calcium uh, for like KH and stuff, but the general hardness, other than like uh, organic like tannins and things, they don't like. Uh, like hard water so um yeah it, it would work to put some shrimp some uh, more difficult shrimp now you can see here's a little tiny baby neocaridina that i threw in here out of the nursery tank um up here we've also got a pleca i don't know if you guys have seen him he is supposed to be a calico but in like in real life if you were to look at him he would be considered a super red with some brown blemishes 
um, and Sister Super Red. Uh, oh, here's the crystal over here. So the crystal's chilling, doing well over here. This is an actual crystal, whereas the one in the tank below uh, has yellow and supposedly some tangerine parent parenting. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I will try to stay away from politics that offends folks because honestly, all the years of watching politics and history, sometimes I just don't know how things are going to shake out and they surprise me, surprise everyone. I just think that you should treat other people well as you would want to be treated. Uh, in general, I am against violence. Um, like, I'm not a pacifist, but I'm against being violent for no reason. Oh, here's the, uh, here's the Limnophilia aromatica uh, at its full height that they sent it at, which is, I don't know, finger length or so. Uh, also, I've got a lot of different crypts in here now. A lot of them look really similar, and there's slight difference. Oh, what size tank would your new one be? Um, well, so I would probably need to get rid of that one. I have a tank outside that I won at the aquascaping contest, and um, I can't bring it in. My wife and I have agreed that I have enough tanks. It, it's not like it's paying me money or anything. I think being a little offensive is okay. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, D. Like, I don't want to alienate people because I know everyone has different views for different reasons. And quite frankly, I'm just going to put it out on the table. Like, I tend to be a liberal, like, libertarian slash, like, you do you, I'll do me. Let's take care of each other a little bit. Uh, I'm pro education, pro freedom of speech, pro freedom of movement, and just like, if you want to smoke pot, go smoke pot. I don't smoke pot anymore. I used to, you know, like, if you want to get married to whoever you want, go for it. Like, not my problem. That that tends to be my thinking in things. Uh, as a small business owner, as a graphic designer, taxes do uh, matter to me, but I won't get into that. It's a very complicated subject. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that right now. But I will get along with everyone. I have family super far right, super far left, and I love them all. So uh, in any case, this is um, a tank with a bunch of stuff floating in it right now, too, since the competition. Uh, maybe I need to ship... Uh, yeah. Uh, Yojo Cromwood, if... If that's your name, not Chris, not really Chris, it would be Chris if you were the Shrimp King, yeah? Um, yeah, man, if you want to ship me crystals and you think you can get them out here, I will split the profit with you. <laughs> um, but I'm sure if you are the Shrimp King, you would know Rob over at Flip Aquatics has far better distribution than I do, um, and chat with him. When you watch Cory on Aquarium Co-op, he's pretty opinionated and he continues to grow, and I agree with letting others do what they want as long as they're happy, not judging others. Yeah, so I don't want to spoil the surprise, but Rob and I are chatting, and some good things might be coming from that. Uh, you know, I've worked with independent an independent farmer in Tampa just talking to him about his fish tanks and stuff, but um, and his shrimp, and I've recommended them. They're a super great price. They're still the cheapest shrimp I know of where to find, and he's independ independent too. They're not all imported necessarily. He's been breeding them in Florida for a long time. I mean, they're originally, of course, they were imported. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, between Dustin and Rob and Sean over at Peck Tech, and I've been talking to Lucas trying to get... Um, trying to get his help on projects, especially on shrimp genomes. I'm really, really talking to scientists online and trying to find people who are sequencing that DNA. Peck Tech is awesome. Uh, I know he's close with Cor Corey and Corvus. Yeah, um, you lost my audio. Can you guys hear me? I got to get off here in just a second, actually. But thank you guys for coming, chilling out, checking out my new Aquascape. Uh, Corvus or Joel actually just came to my event too. Um, so between Rob, Joel, 
Dustin hung out all weekend with me. I drove him around to fish tanks. Um, but yeah, I, in a short time, in three months of being on Instagram, I've made contact with uh, a lot of the big names. I haven't yet talked to Joey or Rachel a ton. Um, so you say Rob is interest in more shrimp and would share profits. My feeling is out on big profit. Well, okay, you're right. I don't know. I don't know where I, I can't speak for Rob at all, but I'm just saying he sells shrimp already. I sell them small scale. He sells Caradino already and people know that he does. So if you have something rare and you can get it for dirt cheap, uh, he might be the guy to talk to. Now, the split, I don't know anything about that. I'm just saying he knows more about them than I do. I don't know a ton about Caradina. I know more about Neo Caradina and fish. Um, but yeah, so in any case, I gotta wrap this up. You can always email me at alexanderjwilliamson.com that, that uh, is attached to this website, or hit me up, look, look at my art website, uh, Soma Inc designs.com that's s-o-m-a-i-n-k designs.com uh, you'll find me there too uh, and then I've got an Instagram link too and a personal Instagram so you'll find me but yeah uh, I will probably go live again on either Sunday if I miss a Sunday it'll probably be a Tuesday but I'm trying to do Sundays and Thursdays uh, around four to five o'clock three to five o'clock I should say and uh, that's kind of the goal. I, I haven't set this like a job. It, I mean, I have, I'm not getting paid. And so if I have a paying job, that's what I'll do. But yeah, I can put stuff in the description totally. And you can message me if you want to know anything else. But you guys have a great night. Thanks for hitting like and for watching and sharing and telling people about it. I'll do my best to keep you guys entertained. Uh, have a good night, guys. Take care. Take care of each other, your tanks your fish, your shrimp, and swim on, guys. Talk to you later.